magic word Here in the secret kindergarten The world's best show for kids is starting The secret kindergarten radio show Use your ears and your imagination We're going to play, we're having fun Welcome to the Secret Kindergarten Radio Show, where young children learn and grow. Young children learn and grow through play, and listening is one of those ways. So listen up and join me now. Listen anywhere. Listen anyhow. I'm in the mood for some music. Did you know that we all breathe? (laughs) We're all breathing. We're always breathing. But this activity, we are going to breathe on purpose. We're going to think about our breathing. All we're going to do is we're going to breathe in and count to two. (coughs) Excuse me. And we're going to breathe out and count to four. Okay, (laughs) let's do it. Okay, we're going to breathe in. And out. Ah, One, two, three, four. And I'll do the counting for you. And we're going to breathe in. One, two. And out. One, two, three, four. And in. And out. One, two, three, four. And breathe in. And. 
and breathe out. And you know, a lot of us growing up, especially me, I usually breathe in for two and out for one. But you want to breathe out more than you breathe in. Because when the cows come in the castle, <laughs> you don't have to worry. <laughs> so let's breathe in and out. And we breathe in and out. I'll breathe in and out. And a big hello to my friends, Captain Fred, Mitzi, and Willow's out there too, I think. Breathe in and out. Now for me, being a stinky old man, you know I find that doing that's weird? I think I might have been breathing wrong all my life. What? That's why if there's any you you kids out there, well, you get all the secrets now. And breathe in. And out. Breathe in and out. And we'll breathe in and out. And for those of you just tuning in, this is the breathing show. All I do is breathing for two hours. <laughs> okay, one more. Breathe in. Two counts and out for four counts. And don't worry, I brushed my teeth this morning. Okay, let's do some music!
Duke of York. He had ten thousand men. He marched them up to the top of the hill, and he marched them down again. Oh, when you're up, you're up. But when you're down, you're down. And when you're only halfway up, you're neither up nor down. Let's go to the market. Let's go to the store. We can buy a loaf of bread and maybe a few things more. Let's go to the market. Let's go to the store. We can buy some broccoli and maybe a few things more. Let's go to the market. Let's go to the store. We can buy some cereal and maybe a few things more. Let's go to the market. Let's go to the store. We can buy some bananas and maybe a few things more. Let's go to the market. Let's go to the store. We can buy some orange juice and maybe a few things more. And that was, let's go to the market by Metallica. I'm just kidding. All the music's by Nancy Stewart from nancymusic.com. Oh, you know what time it is. <laughs> it's nature time. Today, for Nature Time, we're going to talk a little bit about rabbits. All right. Here we go. Bunnies have lots of babies. Rabbits can have multiple litters each year, giving birth to up to nine babies, known as kittens, each time. In nature, they're born helpless in a shallow hole lined with grass and their mama's fur. Mother rabbits spend only a few moments each day with their babies to avoid drawing predators' attention to them. The babies grow quickly and continue to live together as a family. And you know what? My cat's favorite food is rabbit! Ah! Guess what? Rabbits eat their own poo! That's right. Bunnies need to digest some of their food twice. Healthy bunnies eat soft cesotropes, which are their nutrient-packed droppings that look like poo. Let's face it, it's poo. There's no way to use fancy words. The hard, round pellets you see are from the second round of digestion. When you think about it, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool? Who wrote that? But ra rabbits are very, very clever and their poos are very important. They communicate to each other with their smelly poos. <laughs> Do you have a pet rabbit? Or have you ever thought about having a pet rabbit? Well, guess what? Every rabbit is different. It can take a long time to get to know them. And it's hard to tell if they'll get along with another companion animal, even another rabbit. Making sure two rabbits get along takes a lot of time and energy. It can be dangerous to put two together who don't know each other. So keep that in mind. If you plan on adopting more than one rabbit. And you know what? I hope you do adopt a rabbit. That would be lovely. Because all the farmers are out there shooting them. 
Okay. You know what we've got to do now. We have got to listen to the sound of a rabbit. Let's go. Would you believe it? That was a rabbit. That was not a duck. Okay, one more time. Come on, this is crazy. Here we go. Oh, they make a little kind of squeaky quacky sound and that microphone would have been up real close and now I'm super happy to tell you we're gonna play a story and finally after all this time we're gonna play a story by Beatrix Potter this is the tale of Peter Rabbit the tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank, underneath the root of a very big fir tree. "'Now, my dears,' said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, "'you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor.' "'Now run along and don't get into mischief. I am going out.' Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane together to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate.' First he ate some lettuces and some French beans, and then he ate some radishes, and then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. But round the end of a cucumber frame, whom should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages, but he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, "'Stop, thief!' Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one shoe among the cabbages, and the other amongst the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster, so that I think he might have got away altogether if he had not unfortunately run into a gooseberry net, and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons, quite new. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop on the top of Peter, but Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him. He rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each. Presently Peter sneezed, Kuchu! Mr. McGregor was after him in no time, and tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright and he had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp with sitting in that can. After a time, he began to wander about, going lippity, lippity, not very fast, and looking all around. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked, and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth she could not answer. She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. 
Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. Presently he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still, but now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. He went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe, scritch, scratch, scratch, scritch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes, but presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned towards Peter, and beyond him was the gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow, and started running as fast as he could go, along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate, and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him till he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. I am sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed, and made some chamomile tea, and she gave a dose of it to Peter, one teaspoonful to be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. Go Peter Rabbit! Yay! Yum, 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 they love that food in the garden. Boy, oh boy, do they what? Okay. I have a poem. This poem is called The Crab That Writes. All right, here we go. When the tide is low on moonlit nights, out of the sea crawls the crab that writes. Out of the sea crawls the crab whose claw writes these words on the shining shore. Pebble, muscle, fin and scale, sole and mackerel, skate and whale, seaweed, starfish, salt and stone, sand and shell and cuttle bone. When the tide is low on moonlit nights, Back to the sea crawls the crab that writes. Back to the sea crawls the crab whose claw leaves these words on the shining shore. Pebble, mussel, fin and scale, sole and mackerel, skate and whale, seaweed, starfish, salt and stone, sand and shell and cuttle bone. Oh, we're coming up to the half hour mark. The end of another half an hour of Secret Kindergarten Radio. Right here on Revolution Radio. Have you ever seen a crab before? I did eat a crab once. It was a spicy crab. <laughs> Do you know all the fishies that were mentioned in the in the poem? Do you know what a soul is? Do you know what a mackerel is? Have you seen a crab dancing around near the water or in the water? I think crabs are super cool. You gotta watch out for their claws, they're pretty sharp! Alright, 
Let's do one more breath. In and out. In for two, out for four. Ready? And out. Okay, one more. In. And out. What about cut or bone? That's another half hour of Secret Kindergarten. Bye!